Where's the love? Where's the love? It's right here in the heart of the city, man. I'm Silas Grant, and I got my man with me, Tony Lewis Jr. What's up? Yes, sir. What's up, man? It's cold enough for you yet? Hey, listen, not yet. You know this, you know. I like this type of weather, man. It's I like, had to put that jacket on. Yeah. Now nah, it's driving. When that yeah. sun go down, yeah. you know, you'd be out in the elements, when though, man. Walks, I thought yeah. you would be like, you know. It don't bother you, nah. You nah, I got to put that jacket on. <laughs> yeah, you see, that I got is. this, you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, shout out to shout out my man O2. Okay. That's your club. Yeah. Vintage, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Man, oh my, but uh, yeah, I got this heavy. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. I'm ready, though. Yeah, it's it's the uh, fourth quarter. Yeah, man. Of the year. Sure yeah, enough. Officially October. Turn up. You know what I mean? Go, go in the year strong. You yeah, know what I'm yeah, yeah, right. yeah. But yeah, the, the, the weekend, so... Uh, we had like this is the first time we ever did is we had like a little joint party. I for, saw you yeah, post that, yeah. For Izzy and Sophie. Izzy, I mean Sophie's birthday is September twentieth. Izzy's birthday is uh next week, October seventeenth. So we had a little joint party. But anyway, it was man, you know, so the, a lot of the parents, you know, we kinda let the kids have be in the house. We went out back, but it was it was fall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sunday yeah. <laughs> and we had to put I had to you know, the little fire pit and the, and the heat lamp joint. Yeah. Had to turn them jumps on, Slim. It's, it's here. Yeah, yeah. You got to cut that heat on now. There's no question. That's no little, question. Little windows up, put the heat, yeah. <laughs> that time. Yeah, I, I enjoy the fall, though, man. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. I used to like the winter. Like, when I was younger, you know what I'm saying? We'd be outside. I don't care what it is. Right. I remember them but days. I can't, I can't do it no yeah, more, Yeah, I remember them days where, like, it felt like, you had to be outside. Yeah, no matter what, you know. Just going outside for no reason. But but I don't got that in me no more. I'm gonna tell you, and I know we, we gotta get into this show. But I when you just said that, it made me think about maybe the like the coldest I've been recently. Or like and you know. Uh huh. This past Christmas, uh huh. I we we got a uh we got a room down the wharf. You know what I mean? Just sort of you know, do something different, you know what I'm saying? That week that weekend or two days, whatever. That was one of, man, it was so, Sam, it was so cold. It was like negative two or something, or the wind chill or whatever. Man, it was so cold that the, the <laughs> that the stores down the wharf and, you know what I mean, the restaurant stuff were closed down. That's how cold it was. Really? And I and I remember going out to get some food. Like, Shake Shack was open, though. I remember walking to Shake We were staying in Intercontinental, so walking from Intercontinental to Shake Shack, I mean, that ain't, that's probably a, mm -hmm. a, a block and a half or something, you know? So that might have been the coldest. I'm so I had the 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 the, the mass on the North Face. It was so cold. It was it was crazy. That cold man. Uh, that's that joint was vicious. I ain't and that showed me like nah, I ain't what I used to be. Yeah. I don't know if I'm getting old <laughs> or what, but that was like nah, it was brutal. Ready or not, it's coming though. Nah, I know. Yeah. I know. I know. We but but outside of that weekend for real for real. When I'm really thinking about it, you know we was we be doing 75 in the. Yeah, uh-huh. In that period, it really was a pretty mild winter, though, compared, you know, that, yeah. it was super cold, like, that weekend, where they, where, it was like one of the, what they called the, um, the Arctic freeze mm -hmm. or whatever, Arctic blast or whatever. Other than that, though, last winter was, was kind of. It was two days where I went on my walk, and I had to have on, like, two coats. Yeah. Yeah, it was two Yeah, back I know that back, was like one of them. Like, yeah. yeah, but other than that, it was, it was, it was bearable last yeah. winter. You know what I'm saying? But anyway. Yeah, man. I'm uh any whatever it's gonna be though. One thing I want to say, whatever it's gonna be, if I'm here for it, I'm grateful. That's it. You hear me? That's it. Real. I got a question for you. Um, and once you put your thinking cap on, going back as far as you can, what was the first time you you really understood the concept of like beef, conflict, not between individuals but like group, yeah, maybe street, yeah crew yeah like what was your earliest understanding my, of that my my earliest understanding uh, uh, of beef or in, being impacted by beef that i remember was the first time i saw my father with a gun okay right and we were in a car coming home and he had like in the console but he had went to the console for something and i saw the gun and then like the next day, this when they used to be around first and base, that's where his his spot was. 
And I remember, we used to go around there, and I remember him telling my mother, like, he and him talk about that don't come around there. You know what I'm saying? Like, nah, y'all don't come around. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? And we went, I, we was around my grandmother's house and my cousin Nikki walked, not knowing, you know, un- unbeknown to her, like a couple days later, like, we walked around there from, from Hanover. You know what I mean? Which ain't a far walk. Nah. Yeah, it's a, a block. Yeah. And a half. Literally. And, um, and it was my mother pulled up, like, in the car, da, 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 went off, went off. We didn't understand why, why my mother was reacting like that. Like, right. when we be we be right here, like, what, what, you know what I mean? My, you know what I'm saying? Cause I don't think my father was out there when we, but my mother pulled up and saw us, whatever the case may be. And uh, was t- you know, basically was, y'all, you know, there's something going on right now. Y'all can't be around here. And then we started hearing different things about that. You know, it was a situation that was going on, um, which later I would get, you know, underst- understand what that, but that was the first time that they had an issue. They were beefing or the potential, you know, my father's friends was beefing really. But that it could potentially spill over to impact him, right? And it, and you know, basically impact us. So that's like eight years old. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like seven, eight years old. And then like from there, the interesting thing about that, from there, um, like that became sort of a a mainstay, just in terms of just like hearing about, even if it wasn't in our direct neighborhood, but just hearing about people beefing. Yeah. So 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 think about you know what I'm saying we talking about the time it's eighty eight it's eight it's Washington D C nineteen eighty eight and, and eighty nine ninety ninety one nine so people dying <laughs> that's what I'm getting at you know what I'm saying and it was a result it was all you know man they beef when you hear about why somebody got killed they start now you know they beef with you know this this crew beefing with this crew this dude beefing with that dude so yeah, yeah man yeah I was trying to think about it myself I I remember just having grown up like a block and a half from Edgewood and just a general, like don't walk on the plaza. Yeah. Right. They just wasn't welcoming people that didn't live on the plaza. If you wasn't hanging up there, if you had to get to fourth street, it wasn't no cutting through there. You had to go around around. Edgewood street to fourth Mm -hmm. or whatever the case may be. Um, And so that was probably one thing. And then for me, like the, the way my street was, designed as far as school boundaries, I never technically went to the closest schools. So at school, I was educated with people who live like a little over in Northeast, like 12th Street, Michigan Park, Riggs Park. So going to school, you was kind of hearing it about 12th Street, getting into it with with different people. Mm -hmm. Um, Also like early on, like allegiances too. Right, like BM12, like Brentwood, Montana, 12th Street. You would yeah. see that sprayed all over, like, the corridor, like, the shopping districts in that area, right? Um, and that was, like, a wild little connection. Those three little neighborhoods yeah. was really bonded together, yeah, right? Sure. Um, so that those were probably the two first sort of, like, instances where I was made aware of, like, allegiances based on neighborhoods. Yeah, and I, I mean... It's crazy, like, you know, where, like, when you, you know, uh, become a part of a crew, which means just where you from. It ain't like you, <laughs> you know, you get initiated or nothing like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Here in D.C., man, it's like where you live at. And yeah. I remember my homies went to show. Some of my homies went to Turl. Someone went to show. Same way, like you said, with your boundary. You know what I mean? Right. Depending on where you lived in our neighborhood, like if you lived on First Street, you went to Turl. But if you lived on O Street, you went to Shaw. I mean, literally, it's the same. You know what I mean? That intersection. But if you lived on First Street, your boundary was Turl. And if you lived on O, or a certain, well, or let me say this: if you lived on First Street at a certain point, you went to Turl. If you lived on First Street. Closer to O, you went to Shaw. Uh-huh. So anyway, my homies went to Shaw, got into it with the guys from Savage Street in 1512. And I remember that's the first time I felt like for our crew, like like we beefing or like we got a problem with another set of guys. Yeah. You know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, you know, I think in our era, too, is where it also broke away from and this is, I think, I, I've never thought about it this way till I'm just saying this, but I think we also broke away from 
like before it was like it might be brothers beefing. Oh yeah, yeah, like that was families. A, yeah, that was the thing. Like the, the yeah. such and such is in the yeah, yeah, yeah that was <laughs> the Johnsons and the Lewis's. Or who, I'm just using it as an example. Yeah. But yeah, in the, in community, it was like families might get into it. And that's funny you mentioned that because the last episode we recorded, you know, we talked about family. Yeah. And you know, we always joke about this, like me being from Northeast. If you if you were called by your first and last name in Northeast, you was a serious yeah, guy. No, no, no question. You know what I mean? And yeah, so it was a lot exactly. of serious first name, a last name lot guys. Of, yeah, it's no. <laughs> and they, some of them, you know, a lot of people in those families and like people who are from yes, that area know it's certain families that you don't. Yeah. Facts. And and they and they 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 their families cross neighborhoods too. Yeah, fact. And, and quadrants, na- yeah, quadrants, all, yeah, that, all nah, that. Yeah, exactly right. And to it, this I think, day, I think before, but it was based on that. Like, man, that's the here, you know, whatever here, Grant. You and, know what I mean? You know, in some very small instances, I can think of two or three in the city where neighborhoods were called like if 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 first and O had a lot of Lewis's the Lewis boys no nah, facts even if you weren't even you weren't your a last Lewis. Name, well, yeah 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 because yeah. yeah, you was associated with a family that was known I mean I, block, I think yeah. I think the to a certain degree the crack epidemic sort of you know chipped away at that but my point I'm making though was <clears throat> we we you know, it's in, in, in week, but it kept, that, like the whole, the whole, our general, that, that late 80s, early 90s, early mid 90s, whatever, however you want to look at it, really that, that, that's where that, that crew, you know what I'm saying, that, that community, where you was from, really meant, that just meant took on a whole nother trajectory, because the families itself kind of got broken down, you know what I'm saying, where it wasn't just, you know what I mean, yeah, you might have had the family, whatever the name was, they was from a certain neighborhood, but if the neighborhood didn't override, override that family name, but I think in our area, kind of, that changed a little bit, yeah. and the, anyway, the point I'm making is, when, you know, so, so, and in my, in my uh, era, my time, my street, everybody on my street got moved off my street. That's when I started kind of really hanging around O Street. Or, 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 or we had started a lot, O Street do start feeling, you know, comfortable enough to come around Hanover. Because when we was growing up, up until like, uh, you know, 11, 12, like that, nah, they wouldn't come around Hanover like that. We was a little rougher. We was a little, we was too yeah. rough. You know what I'm saying? For real, I'm just keeping yeah. it real. We yeah. was a little advanced. And then when all they moved all my homies off the block, though. So I started hanging around O Street with, with, with my guys. You know what I'm saying? First with my guy, Lord Dennis, rest, God rest his soul. Because he lived closer. He lived down O Street. He didn't live up first. No, he lived closer to M.M. And we got close, me, him, and a dude named Amir. I got close to him through my man Amir. Amir used to come around there with us. I ain't getting all into the history of our blah, blah, how I get to go around first. No, but when they go to Shaw, 7th grade, 91, 92, and get into it with 1512, 1512, you know what I'm saying? They checking everything coming, Facts. walking back down that way from, from Shaw. They not playing with nobody, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah and I don't say that with no, like, they was going hard up there, you feel what I'm saying? And I remember hearing stories. I ain't know none of them dudes up there. <laughs> it's funny you said that because I remember, um, you know, people can have their opinion about music, right? Yeah. But I remember when Junkyard went from Rough It Off and then really on top of that, Go Hard was the next. Yeah, that, and then I remember because I went to Paul. Again, yeah. my boundary sent me out of my neighborhood. So I went to school uptown. Right. And I just remember in the hallways, like, Go hard was like Slim. ho ho. That you, was the phrase. T- no, nah, but see, now you tapping into something though for real, Slim. Like, and that, like when they be doing all this documentary and all that, that's why I be a little sometimes because they be missing. Listen, rough it off and go hard. Like that's the that was the spirit of the generation we come up yeah. in. It was literally and not and this is not like. <laughs> I'm not into like the, the who was the most ignorant, the most wild, but I'm saying we came up in an aggressive, very aggressive. Time. Man, listen. All right, when I was at Paul, he go hard. My he bad. Go hard. Yeah, so I'm saying that was a that was a statement that had what, what's the what's the um that had a cultural representation. Yeah. If you was describing somebody, he go hard. Yeah, and that was the and now general listen and. This time period, what I'm talking about, is where it changed from you wanting to be regarded as a guy, 
Not he getting money. But he go hard. He go hard. And and I don't think people were ready ready for that aggression. I was going to say when I was at Paul, right? It was a culture shock for me because they operated differently in Northwest than how we kind of did where where I grew up, right? But I remember um, there were some guys, and um, at the time they was called T Mob, right? Mm-hmm. But now they Knife and Farragut, right? Okay. okay. So they um, they came to school one day. And whatever classroom I was in, I could see outside the front door of the school. Yeah. They pulled up in like a, a long, like a uh, station wagon sort of like joint. They got out with all black on, ball heads, like shaved completely. Yeah. They walked into school and like the the principal put them out. They didn't do nothing. Yeah. They just walked in with yeah. all literally all black on. You know, some onyx. Yeah, but that that's what was going <laughs> on, right? And I don't think people were really just ready to be able to respond to that. I'm trying to and see. that's something I will never forget. Some of them guys I know, some I don't know. Sure. But when I see any of them, I think about that moment because it really shook the school up. Hey, Slim, and I, they didn't do nothing. Hey, it was it made me think about it. I wonder how my man doing, man, dude. I one of my first little first little summer job. I ain't stay long. We was over minor. <clears throat> it was from Knife and Credit, a dude named Nate, man. You told me about yeah, him before. Yeah, you. Okay. <laughs> man, I wonder how Nate doing, man. And it's crazy that, and I hate to say this like that, like definitely not wishing this on Nate, but you know what I'm saying? When you from, we from this town in the early, we came, you would say, I hope Nate's still alive. You hope Or that. Nate ain't in the feds doing, you know what I'm saying, 100 years, you know yeah, what I mean? Because that's kind of, you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Because it looked like to me, like Nate would have reached out to me by now, some type of, you know, because I, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But anyway, I hope Nate good. Uh, yeah. But I think I think you know to 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 this we talking about that that time and I think sometimes like a lot of guys uh, in that time went away, you know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Young guys, right? 16, 17 years old went in on them bodies, did 20, 30 years or whatever the case may be, 17, 18 court cases and all that. Um, you know, I think you know for people like us who ain't never go nowhere. You know what I mean? For real. We really never, we really have, uh, 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 we seen our city's growth, right? It's in a way that I think a lot of people have not because they left at some point. Even people that went away to, you know, uh, to move to someplace else for a while or whatever. But we've been right here. We've really watched and evolution. And our careers of the city. Yes, afforded right us the opportunity Correct. to see the inside of it Correct. too. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Life and career. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so when I be thinking about that and like what we're talking about and you seen the, 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 the you know, even in, not, we ain't making this no go-go show, but even think about this, the backyard band is birthed out of that time period in the backyard. Like, you know, I be laughing sometimes, right? When I'm like, when I go see back or like, like back is such everybody's band today. Oh yeah, it was. You had to make a decision Listen, back then to really. Listen, dog. You had to make a decision Listen, like I'm man. going tonight, and like honestly, this is no knock to them. It's just the element of the world we live in at the time. You had to make a decision like, hey, yeah. something, anything can happen. Yeah, I might die. I might I'm going die. though. Yeah, I'm going though. No, that was every time you went to see them. That's the you had to come to that really like. like and, and speaking of beef, like we was we was beefing, and we know the people that we beefing with. You're gonna be there. Gonna be there. Yeah. It's no way we not going. It's yeah. absolute. I remember giving some of my homies, like, like really giving them shit. Like, man, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about really talking bad, talking bad to them. Like, what type of time y'all? Oh, you scared? You know all of that. Yeah, yeah. I was that guy. Yeah. I ain't even. You know what I'm saying? Like, what you scared? Then I'm telling them, like, what you scared? I'm going. You won't be all right. I'm yeah. playing. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, you with crazy. me, yeah. I'm talking crazy to them, but like for real, they were smart though. They was making like even like me. I was like, man, I'm going. It's no way I'm not going. I remember them people came through. <laughs> it was my birthday. You know, my birthday might probably be like the next day, but I'm saying it was my birthday. We yeah. it's a Friday uh-huh. going up the black hole. We gambling, proud of going. People came through and and, and dropped that shit off around there. And y'all like, still win that black hole. Question. You still win that yeah, black yeah, y'all hole. Twist. Oh, people got shot too. Yeah, people got shot. Yeah, we're gonna spin back through Howard, man, when we come back. But we going up. Ain't no here. Yeah, we gonna go check on them at Howard. <laughs> when we cut this is real shit. This is seriously how we, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I, that's probably a little later in the 90s, but still, I'm just saying the that junkyard, 
that uh that 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 energy you know what i'm saying yeah. and, and and people you know again that 80s that late 80s early 90s that that was that re crowd you know what i'm saying but that 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 91 92 93 94 95 that junkyard and then turns into backyard you know depending on what part of the, the town you was from but that aggressive crowd the people we talking about you know what I'm think about this dog think about this with the beef thing and i ain't keep trying bring up new topics but it's so important because we came up in the era where motherfuckers really ask you what you looking at a uh, stranger that was real. you don't that was, real. that was a real thing i'm talking about on the question. bus in the mall Trade, well yeah. everywhere you went you yeah. knew it was gonna be action people would be thinking about uh like even when we talk about weapons i remember my 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 grandma always had a car we i i never i never got sent to the grocery store never I'm going to go with her to the grocery store. We're going to get in Lincoln, and we're going to go to the John on 7th Street more, more, more times than not. That's where we went, right? Also made me think about thinking about that. I'm thinking about the fact that most of my friends, except Rome and them, and then Shaky, you know, that's my, you know, my best friend. Shaky, Shaky uncle, he had a car. He drove a cab, so he had a cab, you know what I'm saying? But he had a car, but, you know. The cab was the car, is what I'm saying. And then Jerome and them father had a van. <clears throat> but all our homies, nobody else drove. The point I'm making is whenever they people sent them to the grocery store, they had to walk. So a dude called me like, hey, Slug, man, can you walk? Well, so these are our options. The IGA down the court is in the market. Yeah. Yeah, you know. All right. First street, first between Rhode <clears throat> Island and T. It was a Murray Steakhouse right there. Yes. The seven, the Safeway that was <clears throat> on. Uh, and on fr so we was cool with Florida Park, but the first and T youngins, and then the first like the and the first and W first and V type guys, it'll get tricky. You don't know if you gonna you run know. into them. Um, you know, of course, you know <clears throat> the IGA down the court. Sa Safeway was at Rhode Island in Florida. Yes, right there by Fraser Funeral Home, right yes, there. Yes, yes. Right, so you might run into the Detroit Park uh, 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 guys or the First Street guys in there too. I'm just giving you the boundaries that you was crossing. We start talking about like beefs or crews and shit like that. That you had to when they you trying to go get them eggs and, and a loaf yeah, of bread sugar. and that sugar. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? And then if you had to go to the giant, now we was close. We was close with you know third and P. Of course, that's like home team. But like fifth was was fifth and O at that time and super aggressive. They never had a lot of people like us, but they were super aggressive. Fifth and O. And fifth and O had aggressive older guys <clears throat> and aggressive guys our age, super aggressive, right? And then Sam Street, Sam L, KDP, we ain't had no relationship with them. You gonna have a problem. So I'm, I'm talking about if you a little, if you a guy around our way and your mother say go 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 to the store get some milk, some bread, some sugar, and you can't even tell her, That's, she can't even understand, she can't go, even fathom. Go get it. Yeah, go get it. And you it. better, you better come back with it. Yeah. You can't come back. And, and tell them people they took they took it. Who took it? You better go. Fit. So in your mind, your young mind, you like how I'm gonna arm myself. Cause I gotta I gotta get there safe, and I gotta get back with what I'm going for, right? And those kind of th this was the beginning of people trying to figure out. Oh, I need a weapon. And it might start off a box cutter, a little knife, a screwdriver, a kitchen junk, whatever you know. But then that turns into with having a crack and my dude starting to get little money at 12, 13, 14, whatever the case may be, you gonna buy a gun. And that's how it started. And if they got a gun, then guess what? We need a gun. And to that point, those adjacent neighborhoods, you talked about fifth and that being aggressive. They subsequently force you to have to be aggressive as an adjacent neighborhood to them. Yeah. Right? Sure. And I've seen those examples in real life. And that's how you get a group of kids who live in a neighborhood where it's more middle class or maybe it's not as fast and people don't understand all the time why they acting like that. Yeah. Well, you don't know the path they got to take, right? That's right. I always make this example, right? So you take a place like, let's say, Rivertown. And back in the 80s and 90s, most of my family, outside of my mom and dad, most of my family lived on that side of town, right? right? And, you know, people give folks from Prince George's County, Maryland, a lot of strife about 
wow, they going hard, right? Sure. But if some Southeast kids come to Rivertown, which is very likely. Yeah, very probable. It, it ain't going to be but so many Saturdays that you keep running from them. Yeah, yeah. So once one of your friends mm. get the gun or the knife, then everybody like, you know what? Yeah, they might be from Walla or they might be from, you know, First Street or Galveston or wherever they coming from to go right over to Rivertown. But, like, we not going to keep running either. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, I'm scared because I'm still a person. I'm still a person. I, I, and I like I, that girl. Yeah, so you're going to stop acting like I can't talk to her yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, I don't know you. Yeah, I'm not gonna let you do nothing to me. Yeah, and that's a great, and that's how this whole this area, <clears throat> you know, kind of it gets, you know, that's the reality. That, especially in our, era. I mean, that's where laid forth, you know, a lot and a lot of what we see, um, you know, even from the generation right before. So the guys that's like 50 now, yeah, right, that. That kind of thing. So you kind of, you on top of what you just described, you also growing up under some guys who really kids too, if you're really being honest, they still children, for real, for real. You know what I mean? You 10 and they 15. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But they telling you how, how like how I'm supposed to go. I mean, I was at my, let me give you an example of what I'm saying too. How this stuff impacted us too. My, I was the other day. I was at my uh, the kids' game, me, my dad, and and a friend of a guy who was locked up with him, and a guy who I considered to be like you know an older homie. He ain't from my block, but he from Florida Park. He from a few blocks up. I've been knowing him you know all my life. You know what I'm saying? But he when he killed my big homie. Right. Right. Yeah. And so at at, at at when somebody you looking up to when you 12, 13, you 13 years old, he get killed. He 19. I mean, but he like a man. He 19, 20. He like a fucking, you feel like he's like a a god. A man, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But now looking back, you see that age gap ain't really as big as what it seemed like back then. But anyway, now I'm at the game. I'm with, he did 30, 30 years, basically. I'm 43. He only been home maybe two. He probably did like 28 years. Mm -hmm. But he home. And he had the game. But I'm, you, because I could have a lot of kids though in that situation because I had a relationship with him prior to the incident. <clears throat> but it's, 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 my point is it's incidents like that, that also my generation, you inherit that problem. For sure. You inherit that beef that start at that, at that age, or age group that's above you. But, and then you grow up a lot of times having anger and resentment for not just that person, but anybody that's from his neighborhood. Yeah. Uh, so <clears throat> if people don't be understanding that a lot of the a lot of these beefs get handed down. It, and even we see internationally, right? We understand it when it's like state versus state, you know, country versus country, or even in what you were just describing about how people get turned up. Think about an international situation where if I'm a country, I get a nuclear bomb, right? Say if Pakistan gets a nuclear bomb, India is their neighbor. India going to say, shit. We need to get. We need a nuclear bomb. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty, you know, that's a real, <clears throat> like, uh, 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 literal example. I don't know who got it first, but either way, I'm just saying, these are two neighboring countries that have a, a nuclear bomb. And, part, and that's also reason why I say, uh, you know, and then Israel has a nuclear weapon. That's why, you know, Iran has been trying to get a nuclear weapon forever. They're not the exact neighbor, but they're not far. Yeah. That's why Saddam was trying to get <clears throat> a nuclear weapon. That's why, but that's also from an international standpoint, why America has tried to stop those type of countries. From, but you get what I'm saying, right? But we don't, when it, but that's, so if, 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 if this hood got the Ghost Jones and got the ARPs and the, and the AR-15s and, and the Drakes, shit, you think we going to just stay over here in the Switch Jones? You think we going to stay over here with the regular nine? Yeah, and, and now today, today, very good point. Today, for whatever you feel about it, they're announcing it more because they leverage art and video and social media to show what they have. Yeah. So now if you are a neighboring neighborhood, right, you know it's not a question now. You've seen it. They got it. Which is not different 
from fucking Kim, Kim Jong-un having military parades showing... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? The yeah. intercontinental missiles. We yeah. can touch you. I mean, still, I mean human beings, <clears throat> real problem, serious, man. Human beings... One, I think that's the reason why, like all of our whatever holy book you talk about, right? It's the Bible, the Quran, the Torah, any old Hindu, Hindu scripture, Buddhist script, whatever, right? However you look at it, it's all about human behavior. That don't change. It don't change really in any culture. Like certain norms change and rules change, practices. But I'm saying at, at the essence, at the core, human beings are human beings, bro. So again, when 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 Putin puts on the Russian Independence Day parade and he's showing all the super hypersonic missile shit, no, it's the same thing as when them youngins got the beams on in the video. In the video, yeah, it's the same it's thing. The same thing. It's yeah. no different, and it's the same thing also when. These uh, factions go to war or commit acts of terror against each other in the name of whatever they believe in, right? Or why they, because the reality of it is we can judge it however we want to judge it on the international level and on the street level. But those players involved, they feel justified, right? It, it It's not. We're not trying to justify their actions, but they feel justified that they going to that extent because whether it's vengeance, whether it's disrespect, whether it's laws, whether it's religion, whatever the premise is, is that that's, they've decided that that's worth going to that extent. And if you are not prepared to acknowledge and respect their belief and why they're doing what they're doing, then it's impossible to stop it. Mm. If you don't acknowledge and respect it, and respect that, right, no matter how you feel about it, that they feel like it matters that much to do. Because yeah. if we come from that, man, ain't no way, man. That, it's dumb. They crazy. Dumb. Then you're not going to be able. There's to no solve way it. you can bring any resolve to it. Yeah, it's no way. You have to first say, I, I understand why you feel the way yeah. you feel. Man, I see you. Yeah, I see you. I can, under, I can see why you may feel that. <clears throat> you may even say, I may not agree, but I can see why that. Because you're going to point, they're going to, oh, it's something. It's some, man, if they wouldn't have never did, if they wouldn't have never spent this junk, if they would have just gave us a little bit more land, if they wouldn't invade, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> that there is in their mind something that started this, right? And so that's what I think. In the, <clears throat> if we're gonna bring peace to these community situations or these international situations, which right now, obviously, the two big things that are going on, um, you know, what's happening. In, in 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 Israel, in 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 the Gaza Strip, you know what I'm saying, and also what's happening in Ukraine. If you're gonna bring peace to them, you know, hopefully there's somebody, right, some violence interrupter <laughs> of sorts, right? Because anybody's gonna bring, whether it's America, whether it's the UN, whether it's NATO, whomever. Same thing in the community. Somebody's gonna have to be able to go in there and say. First of all, let make both sides feel seen, heard, acknowledge what their gripes are, and from there work to the middle to say why peace is the best option. You know what I'm saying? And trying to figure out if either side could give a little, you know, um, because like if 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 there is no and I, you know, we've been in these situations like, like on some community level, because it's like it's like when you have a conversation with somebody, you say, "Well, wait, is there no, is there no resolve, right? Like really putting that in their face. Like, what is the alternative to peace? You know what I'm saying? Like, is do you do you really want it to just all go up in, in the air, like like literal destruction? You know what I'm saying? Because you gotta know that it that can't continue. It just can't, you know, no war can be forever. And it may go on past the persons currently involved. Like some people probably feel that way. Like, yo, I'm, I'm gonna die about this. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, it's and it's and then the moving parts play out when you feel like you've got the right parties at the table, and then there's a wild card because somebody that should be there is not, and they yeah. they feel away. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. funny. I remember this moment. I got pulled into a mediation like out of nowhere. This guy, who, if you knew him, he was never about mediating anything. Right? Yeah. He just randomly walked up to me one day. It was like, man, come with me real quick, man. I'm about to try to squash something. So I'm looking like he is trying to squash right. something, right? Right. And why you why you asking me to go yeah. with you, right? So just yeah. me and him go and we talking through the situation with some guys. And when I showed up for whatever reason, they was respecting that too, right? I none of this I expected to happen the way it happened, right? Yeah. But the one thing they said at the very end was like there's somebody involved in this that is currently incarcerated and when that person come home, then we can revisit it. For now, it's cool. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But that wild card was that person who couldn't be there. Couldn't be there. Right? And fortunately, that person came home and it still stayed to this day. But yeah, that was a moment for me many, many, many years ago as a young man, like, walking into this situation, like, <laughs> unannounced. And they, like, relying on me to try to talk through this thing with them. And we having a great conversation. But the one guy pointed out, like, listen... This is all fair and well, but like, there is one person here that there is one person involved that's not here. Yeah. And so when you yeah. got those situations, right, you got to make sure you got the right people at the table because there may be somebody that does have staying power or a stake in this, and they may not be there oh, at that that's time. A, that's a great point. And I, I think about, you know, all <clears> of the <throat> situations I've been in, you know, personally and professionally in that space. And, just thinking about how you be feeling, like you be wanting the situation to be resolved. <clears throat> you also be thinking about though, like when you putting your name out there, like you want you like yo, this has to stay because if not, I don't want to be held accountable. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Can I trust? <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, that's important. I think also just laying the cards on the table, right? All of them. All of them. <laughs> I mean, I, going back to what you said about your big homie and, and his situation with him being, you know, found guilty of a murder of somebody else, right? Yeah. I mean, like, laying the cards on the table where when you know people from different parts of the game, right? And people are charged and people plead guilty and admit to doing these sort of things, right? And you've got relationships because of your proximity to it, right? Yeah. Being straightforward with other people, like, hey, I know this person. Yeah. I'm just being real with you. Yeah. Right? I mean, I, I've had them situations, too, where I've had to have conversations. Like, listen, I found out on the back end, it's all public now, but that's a friend of mine. Yeah, and what, you know what, to that point, too, I, I you know, we I think we living in a time now where, like um, a per people ain't gonna let you play Switzerland. Meaning, you know, Switzerland's always like quote unquote they've been known to be neutral, right? Uh -huh. Um, but like you can have. I mean, I grew up having relationships, and I, I remember too having relationships that my homies ain't have. Yeah. And then we get in you your friends get into it with people that you have that real you relationships know. with, man. Yeah, and then you gotta have that conversation. You gotta have that conversation. You try to bring, like resolve to it you know you try to bring them together but sometimes you know depending on what the level of the situation is it ain't that simple then it's also like then it's the struggle like do you not you don't you try not to take it personal that like man look man i said leave that shit alone man this you know what i'm saying but but like <clears throat> for people that find themselves in between like in the middle and some people even got family on both sides of conflict. Yeah. You know? Um, like, what would you say to those people? What, like, what, what, and I know that's a tough question, but just like, what advice would you give them? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You what gotta, do you think are some of the best tools that they could use? You got to state, like, where you stand in terms of, in general, how you move. Right? Yeah. So, it's one thing to have pride in where you from, whether it be in your conversation, 
or if you are like if you talk about DC specifically, right? If you go to the go go and you know you known for being from this neighborhood and maybe it's your birthday and you know yeah. they recognizing you specifically for where you from, right? It that's cool, but I think you have to also let it be known that this is a pride thing and not a set tripping thing for me. Yeah. I'm proud to be from here. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. I'm not set tripping. Yeah. And your people got to know that that's how you move it. And your conversation has to be consistent in that. Yeah. And your right? actions. And your actions. So it's certain conversations you can't be in. Yeah. Right. You know, just being specific, like if we talking about, you know, the, the conversations people have in the street about who's telling Things like that. Yeah. You might got to start removing yourself from that because that's a part of, like, the culture of when you in it yeah. and you set tripping yeah, you hard, right? to certain. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or, you know, you just have to walk in a different lane. Yeah. Still hold on to your legacy of connection to yeah, that group. Sure, sure. But I think you got it above anywhere else it, where you from in your homeland. You got to be clear with them. Yeah. And they got to know what's the difference between you and them when it comes to that. Yeah. I agree with that. And I think a lot of times, a lot of guys, unfortunately, don't be having the strength yeah. and the courage to actually do that. And that don't take less. I mean, you're, or they not living consistently on it. Because yeah. I think that's a thing. Yeah. You double-minded in how you moving. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Your actions got to yeah. you gotta be aligned for people to take you seriously. Yeah. Um, you know, and I think a lot of times, you know, I know I've been in that situation where, you know, back in the day, you know, <clears throat> when we were into it, you know what I'm saying, uh, my neighborhood was into it with the quarters for years, you know what I'm saying? And, but I think people from both my side already knew where I stood. and Because my whole thing when that shit first kicked off was just trying to like, come on, man, we what you mean? Like, we the same thing. We homies, like. We got, again, we got family. We got, you know what I'm saying? Like, what you mean? Like, we can't, even if a person from up our way and a person from down their way had got into it, then, but see, when the blood get this shit and it gets, it started getting crazy. Yeah. See, that's the thing, you know what I'm saying? But somebody still, and I and I wish this on, on for any crew out there, any youngers out there in, in the mix, then understand that peace is a, an option. You know what I'm saying? You just gotta, you gotta want peace, right? Um, and, 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 and knowing too, we come to that realization, you know, when enough people die, enough times, enough of them bullets fly, and you start to really realize, though, that no, many, no matter how many of them die, get, whoever died on your side ain't coming ain't back. back. It don't really make you feel no better and all that. Like when you really, and it takes, because everybody, go, every generation go through that. And, or you, your homie, the guys who the beef really started with, you know, you might get a call from one of your homies, you know, he in USP, such and such. And he telling you, man, guess who my celly? A, a, a dude from the opposite side. You're like, what? And he in the background. What's up, Slug? What's up, Slug? What's up, yeah. Slug? Man, tell, oh, that's Slug. Man, tell Slug I said, what's up? Yeah. Man, you're like, huh? That happens a lot. Damn, bro, we could have avoided all of the y'all. You know, be, it, it, it wind up dead. Like, And I think for a lot of the younger guys who so much in their vengeance, in their, um, you know, Thirst for revenge, which I'm not judging. I, I get it. We we've been there, but we try. People be trying to tell you, and, and this generation got more of this. What I'm about to talk about than anyone before. You got people to tell you where that's going to end up. You got a you got a map. You really do. It's a map. It, and and that's some of the things that, that I think you know. Um, I'm not telling you don't. I I don't understand why you feel like you feel. I'm not. I'm not. Like that's why I'm you know, like to your to our earlier opening point about you have to acknowledge I get it. But when a person tell you, man, listen, Shorty, I've been there. But I wanna hear you out, I wanna hug you, I want you to know that I get it, Holmes. I feel you. But what I am saying to you is we know where this go. Peace also does not mean you get your way at the end. Oh, that's a very big thing. Internationally sure. and locally, right? You got to be or or well not or and in addition to that it also doesn't also mean that we have to sing kumbaya. We can exist without being friends, but then also like whatever you you know the things that you want the list the laundry list of things you want. If it's A to G, A to Z, A to C, you may not get them all, 
And we can't say that I'm not going to rest until I get peace. But peace means I got to get everything on that list. Yeah. That's and the I, thing. And I think, you know, to the, to thinking about the way you just said that, I be wondering too, like, do somebody, is that, well, outside of everybody on the other side dying, what do you want? Because mm -hmm. the thing that you really want <clears throat> cannot happen. Right? Which is your 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 loved ones coming back. To come back. That's the thing about death. Death is really is final. I, I remember like I always talk about this when I used to do my classes, I used to talk about this scene in the movie Three Hundred where um not Leonidas but the captain, his man, his son was one of the young Spartans. You know what I'm saying? His son and another young dude, they out on a battlefield competing to see how many Persians they can kill. They both too bad young, you know what I'm saying? And all he wanted to do was make his father proud. Um, and him and his father like gaze at each other across the battlefield when they think the battle over. He, his father beaming, like he proud his son really demonstrated in this manner. And then, you know, the um, one of the Persians come on a horse out of nowhere and cut the son's head off. I remember that right? scene, yeah. And then the father goes in rage. He killing all the Persians to get to his son. He killed like 10 Persians in a row. I, I, when he get to his son, his son still beheaded, beheaded, right? That scene helped me in a, in a time when I wanted, after my little cousin Allen got killed, uh, where I wanted... You know what I mean? To do, I ain't kid anybody I thought might have had something to do with it. I wanted them to die. That's how I felt in that moment. And I watched that movie and I saw that and I feel like God was talking to me for real through that joint because it was like a calm that came over me. What I, I think, what I, what, it, what, what I, the realization that I came to was that no matter how many people I killed, I, he would still be dead. Still be dead. And I know yeah. that's, that's, that was a hard pill for, pill for me to swallow. It's still hard for me to swallow that pill. You know what I'm saying? But what I know is, especially being through, that was the biggest loss for me just in terms of, you know, who he was to me. But losing a lot of my best friends and a lot of close homies, it don't, you, they don't come back. I had a friend of mine who, whose mom passed away. And, um, I had talked to him the day she passed. Unbeknownst to me, she died, right? So another friend of mine called me and was like, man, you know such and such mother died? So I was like, I just got off the phone with him like an hour ago. He's yeah. like, yeah, his mom died. So. Has she died before you talked to him or after? She had died that day, like that morning or something like that. Right, so he knew. I mean, yeah, he, he was knew, aware. He, he was aware. He, mm. he was aware because the guy who called me was like yo his mom died yeah right yeah and i called him back and we had a conversation he was like yeah you know she passed away or whatever so i just let him lead the conversation i didn't try to probe or go anything go into anything further so weeks later funeral all that you know go to the funeral and then he said something to me that i'll never forget he was like he sensed that I was uncomfortable. So he was like, let me tell you something. He was like, I'm not worried about nobody dead. I'm worried about people walking around and got one up on me. Hey. And I was like, hey. He was like, yeah, I ain't, he said, people die. He was like, but it's, if somebody, if you got an up on me and you walking around, right? Yeah. So my point is, you know, peace is not about you warring until you get everything you want because like you said the 10 Persians you kill don't get your son back yeah. the 10 people you target and don't get Allen back yeah. right so people are going to have an up on you sometimes yeah, that's right and the up on you sometimes is your interpretation oh, that's, that's right because they might not be keeping score yeah. you might be keeping yeah. score Absolutely. sometimes the scoreboards that we rely on only we see only we see them yep so that's some perspective on what peace should be for us. Because peace has to really be from within. You yeah. You know what I'm saying? To, to, to that point. Yeah. And that, I think that's what, you know, life has taught me. You know what I'm saying? And I can only hope that, you know, um, the perspective on 
what happens in community and the perspective of what happens what happens internationally. Um, that really, you know, we get away from like retribution, right? Of course, you none of us should, right? Allow and, and self preservation for yourself, for your family, for your nation, right? If you look at it that way, is number one, right? You know, nobody's trying to be killed, hurt, victimized. Everybody has a right to to defend themselves. I'm never arguing against that, ever, ever. But we start to attack based on a difference of opinion, uh, a, a difference of, you know, ideology, a difference of religion, a difference of community. You know what I'm saying? Those are the things I think we can rectify. Like we can we can get to a place where we can coexist um, because what we're seeing, too, in community and in the world, some of these conflicts that are supposed to be between me and you start to affect so many other people. See. You know what I mean? And, cause, and it's, it's, it's almost impossible to contain, you know, these, these, these negative interactions. You know what I'm saying? There's so much collateral damage, and unintended, you know, consequences of these disputes. And then the, the definition or the labeling of who's innocent becomes gray. Yeah. Because people who are angry, people who feel like it's that they're supposed to retaliate if they see you in an area where the culprits are and you're just simply enjoying life, they want to cause hysteria and terror because they feel like you should you don't deserve the right to be outside if the people that you know are causing this harm to me. Yep. And we see that. And we see that. In community and we and see, we see it internationally. internationally. It's the same thing. Same exact thing. Yeah, I'm I'm coming through and spinning purposely with no intent on hitting a particular person because I you, you you shouldn't have the luxury of being yep. outside. That's how they feel. And she wouldn't give us that luxury. Yeah. Possibly. Yeah. You came through my way. I know, man, you know, you know, y'all did. They came through. Man, it was women and children through here. We going to yeah. go on kid who outside. You tell, you tell a story a lot. I want you to share here, too, how a friend of yours told you, like, Slug, you can't keep giving them chances. Man, slug, you really, you think they'll do that for you? Yeah. Man, I'm telling my man, man, y'all fall back. No, he ain't with that. Yeah. Good, good man, man. No, I ain't going to let you do that. I ain't let you work him right here, man. Good dude, man. He ain't with that. You know what I mean? It's when he's you know, it's, it's two million of them. It's a rock of guys. Just good dude, man. He, like, that happened like, That happened several times. My man said, Slug, man, you think they'll do that for you? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You that goes that? back to the courage because I've seen it where guys are cool with you one on one, and then they get around their friends, and it's just a whole different no, sort of no, level of no, comfort. No question. Yeah. Or people may not just. I'm just thank God that I had that kind of uh, rapport with my friends, respect from my friends that <clears> they listen. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of dudes wouldn't be here. You know, but I also know that I like to believe, man. People gave me that same protection. Right. right. Maybe unbeknownst to me, you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. But I know it. No dudes caught me out of bounds, you know what I'm saying? Um, but I've always tried to extend that, especially I just could, you know, also, too, another thing, I had conversations with my friend, like, you know, I, you, you got a moral comp. When you're thinking from a moral base in, a, in an amoral environment, yeah, you, you at a disadvantage. And I'm trying to figure out, is this the right thing to do? And but they but just is hit. it always morals, right? Think about this for a minute. Like I always internally think of this example. But morality you know, is relative to Yeah, it's relative, right? Because because yeah. I think circumstances and, and, and the scenarios and the pressure you face with, it changes a lot, right? So, you know, if 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 you have a report due for class tomorrow and you know, you up tonight until four AM and you got an eight AM class, right? At a certain point, you just throw the papers in the air and be like, man, I'm just turning in whatever I'm yeah, going to it turn is in. what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> yeah. There are people who live like that all day long, though. Yeah. Like, you might have three papers due a semester, so you got three nights where that happens to you, right? But there are people who live like that every day. 
Yeah. It's 11.59 every day. Yeah, all day. All day. It is what it is. Right, it is what it is. They throw their hands in the air. You, yeah. you know, I got a 500-word essay. I don't even care that it's cohesive. I just need to get 500 words. I'm at 501. I ain't even trying to finish it. I'm just turning it in. Yeah. Because I just got to turn it in. Yeah, it is what it is. People just turn in their work in every day. It is, <laughs> is what it is. So their decisions, it ain't, it ain't even always about morality. It's about the circumstances. Yeah. yeah because sure. you, you, you lose, I think, you become delusional because of your fatigue, right? The fatigue, it's, it's a known fact that fatigue can make you delusional. Sure. Right? So you've got this physical fatigue. You've got this psychological fatigue. And your decisions are compromised as a result. Mm -hmm. So I had to pick IGA over Safeway, and I still got Chase home. Next time I pick Giant over IGA, still get Chase home. Yeah. Right now I'm finally going to go to Safeway, and I think I'm getting Chase, but they're not even going after me. Like, <laughs> yeah. you on eggshells. Yeah. Yeah or, you, yeah, or you get, they tell you, catch you. You get jumped a couple of times. You tell you, know what? I got something for their ass. Yeah. No, <laughs> no yeah. real though. Yeah. And, it's not, <laughs> and it, it be like, a lot of people I think that don't come from them environments too. They, 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 you know, just because cause sometimes when people show up in community, it turns like when you, you hear about somebody 16, 15, whatever, 17, 18, 19, 20, whatever the age. And you think whatever that issue is, start it. At that age. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a build-up. You know what I'm saying? Like, some of this stuff be going back to, like, second and third grade. You know what I'm saying? With youngins, we don't like y'all. Well, you in the second grade, right. sir. You are seven years old. Yeah. But you already have said that I, I don't like you or I can't like you. And this is real. This, again, this is real in community. And this is real internationally. Yeah. You're, 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 you're growing up in these disputes. And when you become old enough to participate in it, right, you, some people, you know, and it's just like, it's always going to be people that rise to the top. And you, some people, it ain't even necessarily a decision. But with some of your God-given gifts, skills, charisma, courage, whatever it is, you may be able or willing to do something that uh, nobody else has ever done. Right. That push you sort of like at, you know, the, 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 the head of the class, if you will. Um, but we constantly see right again that these things in the same way. Right. With, you know, people dying prematurely, uh, 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 unconscionable trauma and despair. You know what I'm saying? Um, and it's really changing. Uh, the trajectory of family, community, and country. For real, we're losing, and it's, it's like, and the question becomes, like, to what end? For what, right? Is it really just ego and pride, right? Is this people's inability to not um, give a little, to gain a lot? Um, and I just hope that, uh, you know, cooler heads prevail. I hope that, you know, like locally and internationally, that our peacekeepers, if you will, um, that and, and that our people that have the resources and the the, the um, relationships, because there's some people, you mentioned the people that's like not at the table, that's the wild card, but it's also sometimes people that's at the table that could really be the uh, deciding factor for peace, that, that sit it out. Yeah. They done gave up, or they not invited, or they don't. Somebody don't see the value of them being there. One or the yeah. one or the other, or they may not. Right? They may not. Yeah. It could be for their own selfish reasons that they want that they may. This is not a sinister statement, but some people benefit from conflict. Well, shit, they beefing shit, and you know all the sales gonna come around our way. Yeah. I'm just giving that on the community. It's level. just a yeah, it's a reality you know though. Oh, if they beefing. Then she, that gives us more power in the region. Yeah. I'm saying that I would say that that would be like from an international standpoint. But like these yeah, are it's, all. The it's good to make that that side by side comparison because some people watching this understand the local, some people understand the international. The yeah. goal of this conversation is to merge the two. Sure, to show the humanity, yeah. right? And the humanity don't change. Yeah. 
and when we when we have humans in dispute where it's happening that don't really change it and we we mm. justify on an international level sometimes we say we justify the lick back we under we if they attack you know what i mean because i don't care we went we went on a 20-year rampage around the world especially in the middle east at, or in in asia you know what I'm saying? afghanistan iraq syria you know what i'm saying um them towers still were gone. All those, what, 3,000 3, people? 3,000 people. People still they gone. They still gone. People still gone. You know what I mean? Do those families, you know what I mean? The families of them firemen and police officers to them them, them uh, employees that was in them, them tourists that died, whoever it was, you know what I'm saying? Same, them kids, families, the people that died at the Pentagon and all that, like, you think they, them, you know, because, cause, you know, and the Taliban back in, in 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 power in Afghanistan. I'm not saying it was it was for not, but you get you get my point. Do yeah. you think the families feel really feel? But they, they Thanksgiving come, them people still gonna miss they them still. people. It's just what it is about death. Yeah. So it's like okay, you know, because when you get that off, it's like, bro, I tell you, I know. So it, it's it's like these this these these human interactions, um, they aren't really different. They they're not. Yeah. They're not different, and I think calming them or bringing um, resolution to them, you know, again, like I said, stated earlier, you know, some of the same tactics, um, you know, can, should, and, and, and hopefully will be used um, yeah. for the sake of, of humanity. You know what I hope? This is how I kind of want to land this plane as far as the discussion. My biggest hope is that people see local and international conflict and it inspires them to try to find peace in their own lives with people that they've yeah. had fractures with right seeing the carnage and saying you know what i don't want that for me and mine Come on. let me try to find a way because what happens tone is that if you watch enough of this stuff on television youtube instagram it can incite you in your own conflicts, it whether you believe it or not, viewing these things all day and hearing about conflict all day. I mean, even if you look at how reality television has reprogrammed people's minds just to have conflict. So much so that there have been spinoff shows mm -hmm. that are smaller where the premise is the same. Get people in the room and get them to the beef. Because yeah. we've seen that work at a larger yeah. scale, right? Facts. And then in your own personal life, I'm, I'm, I'm having spats online with people and I told them off and yeah. I checked them in. Yeah. But it, it incites in our own personal lives this desire to always have an absolute win, which there's no such thing as that. Right, yeah. You seeking something you can't reach. And try to destroy Destroy other people, person. right? Just destroy Just them. Just obliterate them with like no. Yeah. Like, Instead of a gun, it's a keyboard. Yeah, facts. But right? the action itself. It's the same thing. Same thing. So I hope people are inspired yeah. to a point where they say, you know what? That's just too much carnage. I need to get myself together mm -hmm. versus being incited by it. Facts. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. So, um, you know, for us today, it was really about, I think you said it best, um, you know, humans in conflict, right? It's just across the board. Yeah. Whether it be children, locally, internationally, whether it be faith based, whether it be country based, whether it be gang based, street neighborhood based, you know, it, it at its core, it's the same. And there are people that look at some of those factions as being legitimate for what's going on back and forth, and then there are other people that see the yeah. other factions of it being yeah, but it's all legitimate. The but it's all the same. God bless us all, man. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Pray for peace, man. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. For real, man. Yeah. Well, listen, as always, we appreciate you guys for viewing. Leave yeah. a comment. Subscribe to the page. Let us know what you think about the conversation. And until the next time, we'll see you. Out of the city. Out of the city.